Hello everyone, welcome to my Tornado Shot Mana Forge Arrows build guide. I have been getting a lot of questions about this build, how to level in Axe, um, how to how to make the build work. And today I will be covering a leveling guide, how the mechanic works, and how to transition from a non-crit build to a crit build. So first of all, the mechanics of the Mana Forge Arrows. I'm just going to show you the Mana Forge Arrow support. Uh, as you can see, the Mana Forge Arrows will trigger the supported bow skills when we spend three times the mana cost of the build skill. So therefore we have two problems that we need to solve. The first is to have a skill that spends a lot of mana to trigger the other skills. Then we have to solve the mana issues of the build because we're triggering a lot of uh, skill. The first problem is easy to solve. We have a six link tornado shot. Tornado shot is used because it is simply the best bow skill. It has a high single target due to shotgunning and high clear speed as well. As you can see, the mana cost of Tornado Shot will increase depending on the support gems. Currently, it is sitting at 22 mana and 14 life. Uh, to me, this is due to me having mana cost uh, reduction craft on my rings. Uh, just for demonstration purposes, if we change uh, some support gems, for example, if we go for Hypothermia, instead of Creeper multiple projectile, uh, the mana cost will change. Here it says 17 mana. So it, we, in this case, not all of our skills will be triggered. As you can see, this one, it says it will trigger once we use 21 mana, and one tornado shot we have only used 17 mana, so it will take two, or two tornado shots to trigger My mana once. Is gone. Okay, so there's that. There are a couple of uh, ways to help us with mana issues. The first, we have mana cost on our rings. This is important since it will reduce the mana cost of the trigger skills as well. So as you can see, the trigger skills only cost 5 mana, for example, here. And 7 mana for Burning Arrow, Tornado Shot 7 mana, uh, 5 mana, 4 mana, 4 mana. So it will reduce the cost, mana cost of those skills as well. Then we have uh, Life Mastery over here it says the skills cost life instead of 30 percent of mana cost so this will convert 30 percent of the mana cost of the skills into life so this is why we have a cost regarding uh, when we trigger the skills it says it costs seven life and as you can see when we trigger it our life will lower but this is no problem because we have uh, life gain on hit and leech and uh, this will solve uh, mana problems and life sustain. So using those, those two techniques of the mana cost and mastery, we will be able to basically optimize such as when we use one tornado shot, it will trigger all the supported mana forge arrows. So now we're done with the mechanics. Uh, since a lot of people are asking me how to level with the build, I have created a POB to help you with that. It is my first attempt at making a build guide and a POB, so please let me know in the comments if you have any feedback. Here we have the POB. It is uh, it has level 8 until uh, level 68. And then we I have uh, a non-crit precise technique version and then a crit version. I would suggest transitioning to the crit version once you reach maybe 90 or 95. So let's take a look at the leveling tree. This is what the tree looks like at level 8, and then 13, and then we are going to be rushing to Precise Technique in the early game, and also take these nodes to give us accuracy. It is important that when we take Precise Technique, we cannot deal critical strikes, but we have 40% more, more attack damage if our accuracy rating is higher than maximum life. So it is important to check that if your accuracy has life uh, is more than your life when you're uh, leveling glad to see you you can look at the stats over here offense so currently i have 4752 accuracy Don't drink the water. and i have 320 3221 life so currently my accuracy is higher than my life so the pre precise technique will trigger this is very important uh, since if you don't have the accuracy, you will see a lot of damage drop off. That has happened to me during the act maybe once or twice, 
because I was leveling too fast and not putting the passive skills. So just be careful. Moving on, so we have level 28. We're going to be taking point blank. This will help us deal more damage to the targets that are close to us. Uh, at level 28 and 33, you can do the lab. And uh, the first lab we're going to be taking is Gathering Winds. This will basically give us Tailwind and uh, help us give us more action speed, movement speed, things like that, and help us clear the axe faster. From level 33 to level 43, there we are going to be taking the nodes over here that gives us an additional arrow and some accuracy because we want to make sure that our accuracy is higher than our life. We're also going to be taking some nodes over here and remove nodes here to save some points. And then we have level 55. Uh, basically, I'm rushing to get another uh, node over here that adds another arrow to our skills. At level 55, we also can do the lab, and the second lab will be taking ricochet. This will make that our projectiles have chain and have a 30% chance to collide uh, to chain when colliding with the terrain. And finally, at level 50, 68, this is what I would uh, say I have when I am done with the acts. So I have onslaught, some life over here, some life over here, and most importantly, we'll be taking uh, some damage over here and uh, the sp spell suppression nodes. This will help us with our tankiness. And if we look at the six, this tree, we'll have 80% spell suppression chance just by having these nodes over here and these nodes. And later on, we will also be taking the spell suppression mastery uh, that I give us lucky, chance is lucky, and this will further increase our spell suppression chance. As you can see, it goes from 80 to 96. And next, continue on, uh, staying with the precise technique. I have a non-crit build. So this is what my tree what my tree looks like when I was around 90 and 92. Uh, basically, we have all the skills uh, over here on top. This is going to give us mana reservation skills, efficiency here and here. This way we can have determination aura, uh, grace aura, and we have precision aura as well. Other than that, I'm going to be taking the uh, nodes over here regarding marks and the marked, marked enemy cannot regenerate, regenerate life. As for the skills during leveling, I've made some uh, here. Uh, so the main skill we're going to be using are, is Galvanic Arrow, Mirage Archer and Added Cold Damage. Uh, as for the damage, you can use Added Cold, Added Lightning or Added Fire, it doesn't really matter. It will depend what are the socket colors you pick up when you're leveling. As for single target, we'll have the Ballista Totem in the early game uh, with Galvanic Arrow and Allied Code da Damage or whatever uh, socket colors you have. And also we have Steel Skin as a defense uh, to help us tanking some damage. We are going to have Steel Skin on our left click over here. So it triggers once it is on cooldown automatically you can see over here other than that uh, we can use we can start using mana forge arrows uh, with frenzy this will help us generate some frenzy charges which is increase our attack speed and damage as for auras uh, I've, I feel like for beginners it is really important to use auras when you reach level 16 and buy it by them uh, using two uh, damage auras will help you your damage uh, when you're clearing the monsters and make the campaign very smooth. Later on, we'll be using Purity of Elements when once we have issues with our resistances, and this will also help with the ailment immunity. It is important to use precision in the axe since this gives us a lot of accuracy, and we want when we're using precise technique, we want the accuracy to be higher than our life. Later on, at level 28, you can get the Artillery Ballista our single target skill will be changed to Artillery Ballista with cold, added cold damage, elemental with damage with attacks. This totem will deal a lot more damage, but has a little short delay when the um, arrows fire. Moving on, we have level 38, we'll have Mark on Hit and Sniper's Mark. This, if you have extra socket when you're leveling, this is a damage boost as well, we're, because we'll be cur cursing the enemies with Sniper's Mark. For the rest of the axe, basically I have here, 
the main skill, um, I have added elemental damage with attacks and Trinity. And when we are using Trinity, just make sure that it is triggering correctly um, because sometimes uh, you might not be triggering Trinity correctly. So if that happens, just swap the auras or the gem damage gems. For example, if you're missing cold damage, just uh, if you're missing cold damage, you use cold damage. If you're missing lightning damage, you use lightning damage. So how Trinity works you ha is you have to have two high elemental damage in order to trigger it properly. And in order to see whether you're triggering Trinity properly, you will see an icon on your uh, bar. Let me go to the aqueduct over here. Just to for demonstration purposes. So if I shoot here, as you can see, this is the Trinity. The if the three bars fill all the way up, it means that your Trinity is working properly. Single target damage. We are using. We're still going to be using artillery ballista until the end of the act. Uh, so we have coded damage, elemental damage with attacks, elemental focus, and inspiration to help it with mana problems. After finishing the axe, that's it. that is where I transition to more Mana Forge arrows. I'll talk about the gearing later on. So after you're done with the non-crit version, I have a POB with the crit version. So this is well, this will be very similar to what I have currently. Basically, what we do is we remove the precise technique over here. And we're going to be taking some crit nodes here that increases our crit multi and critical chance and over here same as well critical critical multiplier and critical chance and here and that's about it we are going to be also taking here and here also we have nodes that increase our critical chance and we're going to be taking the uh, bow mastery to increase critical chance as well usually we will not have any accuracy issues because we're using the high risk truth with grant us uh, high precision, high level precision aura. So 30, level 30 precision. And this level 30 precision is basically giving us all the accuracy rating we need. So let's take a look at my current character. Currently, I have all 75 resistance and I tried to get a positive chaos resistance because uh, if not, we're going to be taking a lot of a lot of damage over time. And we currently have 73% spell suppression. And uh, this is because I've removed some nodes over here and change it to crit. And then uh, when we use our potions, we have uh, uh, 70, 69 chance to evade attacks. And when we use the armor potion, we have 69% physical damage reduction. When I encounter difficult content, I also use Vault Grace. Just to show you what okay so the as you can see this is val grace when we're doing some difficult content I'll, I'll be using val grace over here it will increase our evade chance to 72 percent with the with this flask it's going to be 86 percent all right let's talk about gearing uh, i'll have a spreadsheet over here at uh, with the leveling pob non-crit pob and the crit pob with uh, those two have the items uh, that I use and this one doesn't so just take a look if you guys want and I'm, I'm going to be covering some cheap uniques you can use after right after the acts or even during the acts you can use so we have prism weave uh, the taming which is a ring the poid prism which is a quiver the void fletcher a uh, good quiver so the goal is to try to reach 2.5k life and 75% all resistance when you reach maps. For gloves, we're going to be using unique gloves Tanu Ahi. This glove is very really good for us because, it, first of all, it gives us attack speed. It also gives us adrenaline and onslaught with a 10% chance uh, when, we're, when the leech is removed by filling life. And we're constantly leeching and removing life because we're using life as our skill and leeching when we hit monsters. So there's a high chance we proc adrenaline and onslaught. For the amulet, we're going to be using high risk truth. It gives us a large amount of dex and accuracy. So we can replace dex nodes with tattoos. For example, I'm planning to replace, replace some of the dex nodes over here with 
projectile speed tattoos or whatever you need such as attributes uh, chaos resistance resistance normally we for the helmet we're going to be using the fledgling the fledgling so this is basically a big amount of damage projectile speed and projectile damage and we convert the projectile speed to projectile damage as well and it also give, gives us far shot this is basically this ascendancy this is why we're using focal point as our last ascendancy if we, you are not using this helmet uh, you can choose to allocate far shot and not focal point for bows uh, when you start maps i would look for an 800 elemental damage bow so here is a trade website this is an example of the so it costs us 10 chaos maybe uh, this one looks really good it has critical strike multiplier projectile speed the edps doesn't really calculate the critical strike multiplier and projectile speed so those two are also uh, damage boosts it doesn't have to be six link because we don't need a six link other than our uh, tornado shot and if you want to transition to crit i would look for a spine bow with crit and attack speed and usually with 1.5 attack speed and 7.5% base crit is really great. Here is a link to 950 EDPS bow. They cost around 1 divine to 5 divine depending on the suffixes usually. So if we, you, you can look at the crit chance, the base crit chance and the attack speed over here. For example, this bow is really good. It has crit chance and crit multi. I think this is worth more than 1 divine and probably people are going to buy it. What I'm looking for is usually uh, tiers of the fire, lightning, cold damage. That is the most important. And if we can craft some other stuff on the suffix. Oh, and you see the one divine bow is gone. So, yep, that was a really good bow. You can also look for additional arrows. For example, what I have currently is a bow that has decent, decent grid chance. And I don't have the attack speed, but it's fine. Um, and I have the additional arrow. I got this bow for around four divine. So this is really good. And I also have an additional arrow on my quiver. This is also uh, really important if you want to upgrade your quiver. Overall, I'll, I have 11 arrows for my tornado shot and all the other skills, they are firing seven arrows. And this is not even the, uh, the maximum amount of uh, projectiles since the bow can roll two additional arrows we're going to be putting tattoos over here uh, and uh, this will further increase the amount of projectiles we fire. I'll be doing some upgrade, but first uh, I have to farm some to currency. So I will make a, maybe a final update video um, to this build. Other than that, um, I'm going to be leaving a POB to my character uh, from POE Ninja. This way you, can get, you guys can keep getting updates and look at my profile. I'll, I think or I'm going to be also updating, putting a section over here for frequently asked questions. So if you guys have any questions, I'll uh, leave them down below in the comments. I'll try to copy them and answer them over here. So come take a look at the spreadsheet. Maybe there are some updated information. I think that's it. This is my first build guide ever. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Leave a like, subscribe. And uh, if you guys have any questions or comments or feedback, feel free to leave them down below.